Welcome, everyone. Today we're diving into the world of comparative and superlative adjectives. These terms may sound a bit complex, like something out of a science textbook, but I assure you they're not. They're just a fancy way of talking about how we compare things. Take the word small, for instance. If we're comparing two things, we might say one is smaller than the other. That's a comparative adjective. But if we're talking about a group of things, we might say one is the smallest. That's a superlative adjective. So, in essence, comparative adjectives are all about two's company, while superlative adjectives are about three's a crowd. And the best part is, once you get the hang of it, you'll find these adjectives popping up everywhere in your conversations. So buckle up, because we're about to make these seemingly complex concepts easy to understand. You ready? Let's get started. So, what's the deal with comparative adjectives? You might be wondering. Well, comparative adjectives are employed when we want to highlight the difference between two things. Imagine two dogs. One is a tiny chihuahua, the other a towering Great Dane. We could say, the Great Dane is larger than the chihuahua. Here, larger is the comparative form of the adjective large, and it helps us put into perspective the size difference between these two dogs. Comparative adjectives usually end in R or are preceded by the word more. For instance, happier, stronger, more exciting, more beautiful. So if you're comparing two things, whether it's pizza slices or planets, comparative adjectives are your go-to. But what if we have more than two things? Aha, that's where superlative adjectives come in. Superlative adjectives are used to compare three or more things. They usually end in est, or are preceded by the word most. For example, smartest, strongest, most exciting, most beautiful. Let's take an example. If you've ever been to a zoo, you've probably noticed that some animals are larger than others. Now, if we want to single out the largest animal in the zoo, we could say, the elephant is the biggest animal in the zoo. Here, biggest is the superlative form of big. It tells us that among all the animals in the zoo, the elephant is the largest. So, to summarize, when comparing two things, we use comparative adjectives, and when comparing three or more things, we use superlative adjectives. It's as simple as that. But remember, like with anything in language, practice makes perfect. So, keep these rules in mind as we move forward. But what if we have more than two things? That's where superlative adjectives come in. Superlative adjectives are used when you're comparing three or more things. They're like the cherry on top of a sundae or the grand finale in a fireworks show. They help us highlight the most, the best, the biggest, the smallest, or any other extreme among a group. Now, let's put this into context. Imagine you're at a zoo. You see a variety of animals, monkeys, zebras, giraffes, and an enormous elephant. If you wanted to express that the elephant is the largest animal you see, you'd use a superlative adjective. You might say, the elephant is the biggest animal in the zoo. In this instance, biggest is the superlative form of the adjective big. It's used to indicate that the elephant stands out from the rest of the animals due to its size. The est at the end of biggest is a telltale sign that we're dealing with a superlative adjective. But hold on a minute. What if the adjective is beautiful? Then we'd say most beautiful, right? Absolutely. This is another way to form superlative adjectives. When an adjective has more than one syllable, like beautiful, we generally add most before the adjective to form the superlative. So if you're at an art gallery and you see many stunning paintings, but one in particular catches your eye, you might say, this is the most beautiful painting in the gallery. Here, most beautiful is the superlative form of beautiful, indicating that this painting stands out from the rest in terms of beauty. Remember, superlative adjectives aren't just about size or beauty. They can express any extreme quality among a group, like the funniest joke, the oldest building, or the most delicious cake. So let's revisit our elephant at the zoo. In this case, biggest is the superlative form of big, and it tells us the elephant is the largest among all the animals in the zoo. And that, my friends, is the power of superlative adjectives. Okay, time for a quick quiz. We're going to test your understanding of comparative and superlative adjectives. I'll give you a sentence, and you have to tell me if it's using a comparative or superlative adjective. First up, 
My dog is faster than your cat. What do you think? Is it comparative or superlative? Option A, comparative. Option B, superlative. Take a moment to think about it. You got it. It's a comparative adjective. We're comparing the speed of two things here, the dog and the cat. All right, moving on to the next one. Mount Everest is the tallest mountain in the world. Is this comparative or superlative? Option A, comparative option B, superlative. Give it a thought. Well done. It's a superlative adjective. We're stating that Mount Everest is the tallest among all mountains in the world. You're doing great. Remember, the key to understanding comparative and superlative adjectives is to look at how many things are being compared. If it's two things, we use comparative adjectives. If it's more than two, we opt for superlative adjectives. Keep practicing these types of sentences, and soon you'll be able to identify and use comparative and superlative adjectives with ease. And remember, learning grammar is not a race, it's a journey. So take your time, keep practicing, and don't be afraid to make mistakes, because that's how we learn and grow. I hope you enjoyed our little quiz. Keep practicing and soon you'll be a grammar pro. Well done. It's superlative because we're saying Mount Everest is the tallest among all mountains. Let's have a little fun now. How about some jokes involving comparative and superlative adjectives? Ready? Here we go. First up, why did the tomato turn red? Because it saw the salad dressing. Now you might wonder, where's the comparative or superlative adjective here? Well, red can also be a superlative adjective if we're comparing it to other colors that the tomato could have turned. All right, let's try another one. Why was the math book sad? Because it had too many problems. Well, this one's not directly related to our topic, but who can resist a good math joke? And finally, why don't we ever see elephants hiding in trees? Because they're really good at it. Here, good is a comparative adjective if we're comparing elephants to other animals that might try to hide in trees. Well, this one's not related, but it's a good joke. Now, let's see some tricky irregular forms. Not all adjectives follow the standard rule of adding er for the comparative and est for the superlative. Some adjectives are just rebels marching to the beat of their own drum. Take good, for example. We don't say gooder, do we? No, we say better. Better is the comparative form of good. It's used when we're comparing two things. For instance, she is better at math than her brother. Now, what about when we have more than two things to compare? We use the superlative form of good and again, it's not as simple as slapping an est at the end. We say best. For example, this is the best pizza I've ever had. So remember, good becomes better and best. It's quirky, but that's what makes English such a fascinating language. Remember, best is the superlative form of good. Time for another challenge. Let's test your understanding with a fill in the blanks exercise. I'll read a sentence with an adjective missing and you'll figure out which form, comparative or superlative, fits best. Ready? Here we go. First up, this is the book I've ever read. Would you fill in the blank with more interesting or most interesting? Bingo. The correct answer is most interesting. We're talking about the most interesting book among all the books you've ever read. Moving on, my brother is than me when it comes to video games. Would it be gooder or better? Absolutely right. It's better. Remember, gooder isn't a word. We use the irregular form better instead. Great job. It's better because gooder isn't a word. And there you have it. Comparative and superlative adjectives made fun and easy. We've journeyed through the fascinating world of adjectives today, learning about their various forms and how they help us make comparisons. From comparing two things with comparative adjectives to ranking three or more items with superlatives, we've covered it all. We've also dived into some examples, such as the cat is smaller than the dog, and the elephant is the biggest animal in the zoo. These examples illustrated how comparative and superlative adjectives work in real life sentences. We've even had a go at some interactive quizzes and exercises, testing our knowledge and understanding of these grammatical concepts. We've learned that faster and tallest are comparative and superlative adjectives, respectively. We've also filled in some missing adjectives in sentences, choosing between more interesting or most interesting and gooder or better. And let's not forget our fun time with jokes. Who knew grammar could tickle your funny bone? Remember the tomato that turned red because it saw the salad dressing? 
Yes, grammar can indeed be fun. We've also tackled some tricky irregular forms. These are adjectives that don't follow the usual rules. Better and best are irregular forms of good. They don't follow the typical ear or est pattern, but that's what makes them interesting. So, to wrap up, remember that comparative adjectives are for comparing two things, and superlative adjectives are for ranking three or more items. They add depth and detail to our conversations and writings, making them more informative and engaging. Thanks for joining us today. Keep practicing what you've learned, and before you know it, you'll be a grammar superhero, ready to tackle any sentence that comes your way. See you!